Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the pixellab.net. Today I'm gonna do a review for the new plugin that Grayscale Gorilla came out with called Transform. So I'm sure that you've seen this before, uh, but I kinda wanna just give you my thoughts on it. So when I first saw this, I was impressed with all the animation presets and the way that you can kinda chunk up your text and have it animate on and off. But I wasn't really sure about uh, how much power this plugin had besides just the animation presets. Uh, but I actually have been pretty impressed with uh, the different possibilities for things besides just chunking up text and having it animate on and off. Um, there's a lot of power in this plugin, so let's jump in and I'll show you what's going on. Now, based on a lot of the previews, it looks like kind of making little chunks and having those animate on and off is the only thing Transform does. But actually, that's only scratching the surface of what it can do. So let's go ahead and go to Transform. And there's a little object here that says replace me. Let's go ahead and drag our mo text into there. And then we'll have to hit refresh. Now, uh, by default, uh, when you use a text, it has the mode set to cloner, which means it's not going to actually chunk this up into little pieces. It's going to take every letter and animate it individually, which is really cool because we have all these presets now that apply not just to little chunks, but to the actual text, meaning you can make some really, really cool animations um, just with Motext. So let's go ahead and play this guy. We have a little bit of a fireworks preset, which uh, kind of pops up and then explodes. And there's just a ton of uh, different presets that come with this guy. So the one thing I want to kind of make you aware of is that uh, you can use this as an animation tool for text. So let's go ahead and uh, just cycle through a couple of these guys. We have Sneeze, which is a pretty cool one. So you can already see that uh, we're able to get some really cool dynamic text animations. And what we can do is have these animate out, or we can just simply change this to in, and then they're gonna animate themselves in. So we get some really cool effects just by doing that. And then you can change the orientation of this effect. You'll notice that there are no keyframes, but we're uh, changing all these parameters on the fly, and we're getting a very quick response so that we can kind of figure out what's going on here. So we can change the orientation depending on how we want this effect to come in. And then depending on how fast we want it, all we have to change is the start frame and the end frame. So if we want this to happen faster, we'll just change that to 40. And then we do have a lot of other um, different things we can play with, like rotation, uh, movement. So we can make this move a little bit more dramatic. And then we also have our time remap so that we can time remap this whole thing. So let's try one more, disintegrate. And uh, yeah, so that's just a way that we can take these text items and have really, really interesting animation on. So that's one thing that you can do. Um, now let's go to chunk mode. So instead of cloner mode, let's go to chunk mode. Now we have to click refresh. And when we hit play, the first thing that we're gonna notice is uh, these chunks look a little bit strange. Let's actually have this animate out. So these chunks don't look super great. Um, that is because um, all these little polygons are kind of spaced out in weird ways, right? So let's go take our transform and change the mode to model mode. And that means we can go back to the text and change it. So what we want is polygons on the faces that are a little bit more regular. So if we go to the caps and we change it from n-gons to quadrangles and make sure that this regular grid is checked, otherwise it'll look like that, check the grid and we have these very nicely spaced out pieces. Now I'll go back to transform and we'll change it from model mode back to chunk mode and hit refresh. And now we're gonna have uh, uh, some little pieces that look a lot better. Now we can change the, the chunk size from 50. We'll change that down a little bit. And now we'll have really nice little pieces, right? So that looks very, very cool. And let's try a different one. Let's go back to our uh, sneeze one, which is pretty cool. We'll have it kind of wiping off, right? So that is how to change the chunk size. And we also have thickness. If we don't want them just to be little uh, flat polygons, we can add some thickness. Um, now, the thing that you need to know is when you add thickness, you can see that they're, they have some substance to them. If we go to the beginning and hit render, it looks just nasty, right? So that's because it's playing with all the different fong angles of every little piece. So then we have this little checkbox called weld, which is gonna remove all the seams. Now this might mess around with your textures a little bit, uh, but generally it works pretty well and it's going to kind of smooth out all of those fung angles so that it looks great until you hit play and then you'll get the uh, the nice pieces that have some thickness. Now when you do use weld and you use thickness, uh, the responsiveness is going to slow down quite a bit. So they do have this preview mode which you can check on and then you can animate and do everything. And then when you're going to render just uncheck preview mode and then your chunks will come back on with the thickness and the welding. 
So that is how you do the chunk mode. Now I'm going to show you one last thing that we can do here. And that is that we can actually uh, use a MoGraph cloner. So let's go ahead and make a Platonic and let's go ahead and throw this into a cloner. And we'll make it a grid. And then we'll go to our Platonic, maybe scale this down a little bit. All right, so we got this grid now. Let's go ahead and throw this into transform and hit refresh. And now if we hit play, what we're going to see is that we're actually able to animate all these different clones using the transform engine, which is pretty cool because again, we're taking transform and we're not just doing the little chunk things, but we're actually making a bunch of clones and using the engine to change those. And then we can use all of these different effects. So if we want to use that crazy firework one again, go ahead and hit play. It's going to kind of shoot up and then it's going to explode. So we have all these very, very interesting animation presets that we can use. And you can really dial in what you want, uh, starting out with these presets, but then modifying them. And if you really want to get crazy, you can actually, instead of using an effect, you can go to custom and it opens up this custom tab and you can design uh, your preset from scratch based on position and scale and random positions. And you can dial in your own preset from scratch which is very, very cool. So there is absolutely tons of flexibility and different things you can do with this guy. I want you to think of this not just as a chunk it up and animate in and out, but something that you can actually animate uh, your text in with and out with and animating lots of uh, different clones and being able to have some really, really interesting animation. If you want it to go in, just swap that out and now they're going to animate in. So that is Transform. I honestly don't have too many uh, complaints about it. I can't really think of any. It's very responsive. I know that's one thing I had a problem with the City Kit was it's a little bit slow, but this guy actually renders really fast and uh, it's really fun to play around with because everything's so responsive and you can just tweak sliders and play around until you get the result that you want. So if you're considering buying Transform, that is my two cents. I hope that uh, kind of gives you some ideas on Transform and I hope that that helps you make your decision. So thanks guys for checking out the pixellab.net. We'll talk again next time. Bye everybody.